Hello everyone and welcome back to the Cooperley Bushcraft channel. Okay so I've been playing around with these today. The Roycroft style snowshoes that I made in last week's video. Lashings are all holding together quite nicely and they've done quite well. So if you want to see more then stick around. Right so now I'm going under here with both sides of the strap and then around the back so at the moment I've got a very restless dog <laughs> who's on a line in front of me and uh, I hope I'm not kicking her up the bum all the time with the length of these snowshoes okay so we've readjusted the system a little bit uh, <laughs> this girl initially was pulling like a maniac, she's been bred to pull. I fell over a few times, the bindings came loose. So now I've just got a strap going across the top and then a bit of rope going around the heel. It works much better. I've also added the extra rope to the back of Uni's harness to give her a little bit more room, just because I'm a little bit worried about the tips of the skis, kicking her up the bum, especially as if I lose control a little bit, which, uh, wait, <laughs> we're off track now, we're just crossing this, uh, this track here where one of the local guys likes to go snowshoeing, this is his regular little route, nice bloke, bump into him occasionally, uh, but yeah, we're crossing one of his tracks and we're going to open up a new track in that direction and then hopefully we can try we can try to keep it open with skis but uh, to be honest these snowshoes they they float really well and uh, they're not creating a very deep track at all uh, but some kind of a track at least they could be they could be smaller also it's uh, the first couple of days of uh, roundabout freezing point, so the snow is sticking a little bit and adding a little bit of weight. So it is actually really good conditions for testing. Snowshoes. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you a little bit here where I'm out of the wind. <laughs> okay, so I've taken Uni back home. She wasn't enjoying the soft snow. She kept on actually treading on the snowshoes because, oh yeah, look, here's a nice bit of firm ground. And yeah, she wasn't enjoying it. And she was running around and causing tangles. I added a bit of extra rope to her harness <laughs> so she could get a bit further away from the tips of the snowshoes. Uh, yeah, that just created a lot more tangles. Uh, on the tracks, she was far too strong and was pulling me over. And off the tracks, she was just confused and swimming through the snow and not sure which way to go. Right, so the snowshoes themselves. I'm sorry about the wind noise, you must be hearing quite a lot of that. Uh, I'm noticing the second one that I made, where I knew what I was doing a lot better. Uh, yeah, the balance point is a little bit further back, so the tips are coming up nicer. Also, the tips are curled up a little bit more. There's a little bit more curvature. Uh, so the other ones are collecting snow a little bit. Both are working fine. Uh, really good on the really soft parts of snow and it's supposed to be plus degrees celsius so just so just just above freezing point it's colder than that i'm not really it's either colder than that or these snowshoes are absolutely excellent in wet conditions uh yeah this yeah it's below freezing. Oh, yeah. I mean, I can make it. I can kind of squish the snow together a little bit. 
yeah. It's it's not sticking. It's not sticking to the snowshoes at all. Uh, yeah, so when it gets warm, as in above freezing, snowing, snowing. <laughs> Skiing and snowshoeing becomes a nightmare. And uh, I would have expected with the size of these for them to become, to become really, really heavy. They're not doing. Uh, they're doing. They're doing really quite well. Yeah, quite happy with that. The, both of them, they're quite hastily put together. I wanted to get them finished. I wanted to get the video up. And uh, yeah, one of the main reasons I wanted to make these was I can borrow snowshoes and skis anytime I like from work. Uh, but it's just nice to have something at home. <laughs> so I can go out and check my trail camera without having to borrow something. Okay, so what I'm finding so far is the second one, this one here. It's much lighter, much thinner, and my left leg is working substantially less than my right leg. <laughs> so what I can do is trim this down a bit, bend the tips up a little bit more. In fact, what I think I'll do is I'll bend the tips up. I'll cut the tips off. <laughs> Oi, I'm not looking at what I'm filming here. <laughs> Oi, focus on that. Okay, so I'll bend the tips up and cut them. Uh, that way, it's going to be better balanced and more curvature. What I tried to do was bend all the tips at the same time with that one. So, learning points, bend the tips one at a time. Also, the bindings, they have to go across your toe and then a separate one around the heel. Uh, my last snowshoes I had a lot less issues with, mostly because I was working straight from Mors Kohansky's book. They also looked a lot prettier because they were peeled pine. I also had a lot more time on my hands. But realistically, as if you're in some kind of a situation where you have to build these things, let's have another look at the view. Uh. <laughs> It's probably going to be because you've broken your ski, something like that. And you're going to want to uh, put something together quite quickly. So it's probably going to be more like the one on the right. Uh, excuse me for all of the sniffling. I've got a little bit of a cold at the moment. But, yeah, and uh, two of these on the right. It's a hell of a lot better than nothing. But I actually think, as if you do a good job of these, they're every bit as good as a pair of regular snowshoes. I'm leaving some very strange tracks. All of the locals will be going past with their snowmobiles and they'll be saying, what's that weird English guy been creating this time? <laughs> Okay, so now I'm on a good solid snowmobile trail. So I've uh, skied this a couple of times. I know it's been driven a few times. So on a trail like this, although the foreigners who come here do seem to, foreigners, tourists, do seem to like to snowshoe on these kind of trails, snowshoes are just an encumbrance. Uh, whereas a good pair of backcountry skis are absolutely excellent and uh, you get a nice fast glide. What I've done with the snowshoes on this track is 
I've put one on top of the other and I'm pulling them like a pulk and uh, I was wondering about using them as a pulk Okay, so now I'm hauling a vital piece of uh, wilderness equipment, a roll of lino, <laughs> just to see as if it works as a pulk, and yeah, it does. I wouldn't really like to be carrying very much weight, but that seems to work fine. Sorry about that guys, that was just me battery dying. Yeah, so the lino obviously was just to add a little bit of weight and uh, yeah, no problems pulling that around really. I did notice that these snowshoes were sinking into the snow quite considerably more than the Roycroft ones. But on the other hand, they're a hell of a lot lighter and probably going to last we're not hunting okay well that's all for today thank you very much for watching everyone no chasing squirrels and I'll see you all again soon for another Googly Bushcraft video bye for now